Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the 100 amp hour Vatver rack battery. This is a 48 volt battery. It is lithium iron phosphate chemistry. So you're right around 5.1 kilowatt hours. This has over current protection. We do have both the voltage protections as well. So over and under also temperature protection. So over temperature protection, we also have low temp protection on this battery. What this does not have is communication. So that's one thing you'll see lacking in these VATRA rack batteries. And I guess there's good and bad to that. Like really you don't need the comms. You can have uh, everything set to voltage on your inverters and it works just fine. But for those people that want communication, this may not be the battery for you. I mean, it really depends. This this could be set in behind something with communication. So if you already had some other rack batteries, you could put this in the pack and just let it charge and discharge with them. I think Vatver's wall mount battery does have communication. So I don't know why they haven't put it on this yet. They have a JBD BMS in these batteries here. And I know JBD does support communication. So I guess they just shave off a little money by not adding the comms in these batteries. I've looked at a couple other Vatver batteries, really like them. So I'm anxious to see how it looks inside of this battery. Before I do that though, I'll show you what comes with it. So these don't come on at the little ears that you hook into your rack. So they ship them separate, which this is a really good idea. I think most batteries, all the rack batteries really should just do this. It's not that much effort to put three screws or four screws in to attach these on here so they can click into the rack. But these are most prone to get bent when they're shipped with it on there. So yeah, it just makes sense to ship them separate like this. It's not a big deal. Also comes with some six gauge leads and then the screws to mount it, to mount these to the battery. Manual, of course. And then there's enough stickers to cover basically your entire fridge or any window surface you own. There's a lot of stickers in, with this battery. It's funny to me that they still include these with some batteries. Some of these are pretty cool looking though. All right, so I've already charged this fully, but I'm gonna show you guys the front here first up close. Then I'll do a discharge test. Then we'll pop it open and see what it looks like inside. All right, another thing I like a lot right off the bat is these handles. I think this should be a standard in every rack battery build as well. I do not like the handles that are fixed. If they're gonna have them, that's fine, but they really, really need to support them well in shipping. They're most prone to bend as well. So definitely, this is a plus to have these folding handles. The uh, breaker right here is 125 amp chint breaker. I guess that's how you pronounce that. Then over here we have the positive and negative terminals and they've got really, really fat lugs on these. I like that. Some of the other uh, rack batteries I've reviewed have really tiny terminals and that's always irritating. So if you're gonna be having, if you're just gonna be using one or two batteries in a system, you want to be able to put some larger gauge wire, especially the one going from this to your inverter and fitting those lugs in the tiny terminals I've seen in the past is not good. So yeah, this is really nice here. All right, and then the screen itself, which is funny to me, this is the exact screen that the Vatver golf cart battery has with it, which I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is, this is the same screen, yeah. So I mean, it works and that screen I believe was waterproof. I don't know if this is. I'm not gonna be marinating this battery in anything anyway. But yeah, these are very simple screens, but they give all the stats that you would need. This just describes the battery itself. It gives you the temperature right now in Fahrenheit, which is nice. And then all the different cell voltages. So we are riding right at the top. I see cell number three is lagging just behind. I'm gonna give it another eek of a charge before I do the discharge test on it. Yeah, I guess you could say simple but effective, right? The screen gives you all the info you need to know. No communication, just a breaker. I don't know if they have a pre-charge resistor on these units. So that would be something to look up. I'll see if I can find some info online about it or see if the manual mentions it. But if this does not have it, then you would wanna use a resistor when starting up your inverter. Yeah, so it looks like one not is the biggest that'll fit on these terminals, which is still not bad. And that's a pretty big cable. It'd be neat if you could get two out on here. But anyway, right now I'm just using a resistor. Since, like I said, I haven't heard from them, I emailed them though, so by the end of the video, I'll probably know whether or not they have a resistor. There we go. All right, so we are idling right now. So the idle consumption on the inverter 
This is the Flexboss 18, actually. So if any of you are watching, I checked before and I was in the 90 something watt range on idle consumption, but I'm looking here on the shunt itself and it's showing 78 to 80 watts of idle consumption on the Flexboss 18. I know this is a different video, but just in case you guys were curious. All right, so now I'm gonna set around a 20 amp discharge on this and we'll check back when it's time. I forgot to mention Vatward does have Bluetooth on these batteries. I think they almost have it on every one of their batteries at this point. But yeah, super helpful on these rack batteries, especially if somebody is going to have these on a smaller system. And right around the five hour mark, we ended up with 101.5 amp hours of capacity in this battery. Huh, look at that. On the bottom of the lid, they've got these foam spacers here. It's actually pretty nice. Well, this is the first build I've seen like this, but every build is unique in its own way. Let's check and see what size these wire leads are going into the main breaker. So the main positive is six gauge wire, 200 degrees Celsius. It looks like two eight gauge on the negative side over here. Yep, two eight gauge cables on that. I prefer to see five or four gauge on these. Doesn't look to me like they have ferrules here on the breaker going into the breaker. Looks like they just used that white snot to seal it in. But yeah, that would be nice to have ferrules on them as well. Plenty of space though on this build. You can see the JBD BMS here on the wall and then down at the bottom is the Bluetooth module. Over here is a temperature sensor. I like that protective shielding over the cells here. Really nice. They did a great job with wire management on this battery. So we have that one temperature sensor you saw down here. And there's another right here on the cell. I, all I see is those two. This is a really cool design. See, they've got these bars here and then the studs that you saw from above to hold that next bar that goes on top. I'm not sure if you guys have seen these before, but these little plastic holders or binders are actually a substitute for them having to strap everything like they used to. These are pretty neat. I think they're 3D printed somehow. But they go around the cells. They actually protect the cells and they lock into one another like this. So they provide tension as well. They've got real, real tight tolerances here, but there is a little piece of foam here, I guess, to take up the extra space. And that side has a piece as well. Now these should be Eve cells, but we're gonna go ahead and pop this one off right here, this bar, and we'll take a look. I don't know what I was thinking. I've, I've encountered this problem before. Unless you actually hack this shielding off, you can't see the barcode on the cells. I've dealt with this before on other batteries. So I guess that's the good and bad to it. Like they're bound in, everything is protected. That's the good. But the bad is, yeah, you can't really read the cell code on there anymore. Definitely a nice design. I really like this plastic cover and leaves the openings for the cell vents, of course. Well, definitely not a lot to pick on on this battery. Vatra does like to have that bolted bus bar option. If you guys ever did need to swap out a cell some distant time in the future, this could be something you could work on. It would be a real, real pain to get these plastic holders out of there and swap a cell out, but I think that's so rare to begin with, that's probably not an issue. But yeah, a lot of times they do have bolted bus bars. I think the majority of the industry is going towards laser welded bus bars, but these bolted ones, you still see them occasionally. And they do have that thermal relief or tension relief bevel here in the bus bars in case something were to try to stretch. The Eco-Worthy battery we looked at a few months back, they were just basic flat bus bars, so that's something somebody brought up in my comments. 
Yeah, again, not a lot to pick out on this battery. I would prefer to see a four or five gauge wire on the main positive. Main negative's fine with two eight gauge cables for sure. And really the six gauge, I've covered this in other videos, the six gauge will technically meet the amperage rating, but it's just right there at the limit. I'd prefer to have a little bit of headroom. All right, we're gonna close this back up. Yeah, I do like this. That's simple, but effective. And that with the foam they've got on the top of the lid, it makes sure there's not gonna be any incidents. Yeah, I reviewed another battery that had these little plastic rivets on the edges. They had a shield like this, but plastic rivets. And once you popped them off, you couldn't get the things back on. So this is made to be serviceable. Last thing I'm going to do is actually add the battery into the rack of fame here. <laughs> so I've got a bunch of different types of batteries in here and I've had them on my test wall, but I'm actually going to, I moved them over here to the main system. I'm going to hook them all in. I want to cycle them more than I have been to really test these batteries. So I'm probably going to take one of the MK Energy batteries out, move this one back. I still haven't uh, reviewed that one. Move this up and then put the Vatra battery at the bottom. This is a pretty sharp cabinet. I've mentioned it a couple times in my other videos, but yeah, I, I actually like it, but there is some downsides. I guess I might as well show that here. So your actual bus bars are over here on the side of this battery rack. The cool thing about it is, is that it'll fit batteries like the EcoWorthy. It does not like the taller versions like the LifePower, but I actually took the shelving out and just used spacers in here and it did fit. The Vatra battery is pretty fat though. I'm not sure. That's why I'm going to have to, I think, put it at the bottom. Over here on the side is actually where the bus bar is on this bat on this cabinet. And the downside to this cabinet was it only came with bus bars that could sustain around 250 amps, 200 amps, something like that. I think it was 250. So you can fit five batteries in it and you've got a potential of 500 amps there with depending on the rack battery. So I upgraded the bus bars. I just bought my own and installed them. And then I didn't run the cabling through these grommets. I have two 4 aught cables and I ran them here and then through the back. You can see here where I ran them through the back. I actually prefer using these tension grommets uh, because they're, they just make things a lot cleaner. It was not the easiest to get them through the back here, but I, I prefer that. I'd say those are the downsides to the cabinet. The upsides is it looks sharp. It's actually pretty short. If you're going to put five batteries in it, you can still fit it under an inverter pretty easily. All right, let's see if I can, let me measure the Vatver battery again before I do this. Yeah, it's just over, it's right around 17 and three quarter inches long, but this is real deal right here. It is seven inches, almost exactly seven inches tall. So a lot of the other batteries that I have in there are five and a quarter, five and a half, six. So that's definitely going to be taller. It might be a challenge to get this in there. All right, so I got it in, but it's sort of ugly. The MK Energy terminals are all the way on the left, so that does make it a little more difficult for me. I could not lead it underneath. The spacing is so tight. So I think the new MKs actually have, they're actually like the Life Power 4, so they would have positive over here, negative over here. So it's in. All I have to do is add a T-Class fuse for this cabinet before I tie it into the main system, and then we'll have everything up and running. So I added a T-Class fuse for the main positive coming from this battery bank into the rest of my system, which is more of these Power Pros. There's some DIY batteries, and there's some more Power Pros outside. So that's a 300 amp T-Class fuse. Both of my inverters up here could technically use more than that can provide, but I'm not just using this battery bank. So I just wanted something to isolate this battery bank in the case of some kind of mishap from the rest of the bank. And that's good practice. If you're gonna be adding some DIY batteries to your bank or some other kind of battery bank like this here, then a T-Class fuse is a great idea. If the current were ever to exceed 300 amps, that's gonna pop and this battery bank would be isolated from the system completely. But yeah, with the size battery bank I have now, I'm probably only gonna be using maybe 30, 40, 50 amps from this battery bank. So it should be just fine. And these guys are not gonna have communication, like I said. 
So the rest of the battery bank does all of these Power Pro batteries, the new wall mount battery, the 100 amp, and they will charge and discharge with communications. And this battery bank over here will just be behind the scenes, charging and discharging behind. All right, guys, well, that's about it. Vatver does make a nice battery. And technically, like I said, you could repair this battery on your own if there was a bad cell or an issue. You could certainly swap the BMS out really easy. That wouldn't be a problem. I know most rack batteries you probably could as long as you could get the specific BMS for that battery. This particular JBD BMS, I'm sure you could swap out on your own. I don't think they would be too hard to find. They recently updated the app again. I really like what they've done with that. So the app is easy to use. The screen is simple to use. Yeah, I really don't have any complaints about the battery. Oh, that reminds me. I did contact Vatver about the pre-charge resistor. This battery does not come with one. So if all you're gonna have is Vatver batteries on your system, make sure to use a resistor like I did. You can even use a pencil as a resistor. I made a video on that. And I'll keep an eye on this battery as well as all the other batteries that I have in the rack. That's the reason I do this. So I can see you know, if there's any issues down the road. I don't anticipate an issue with the Vatver battery though. JBD BMSs are great. Eve cells are great. So like I said, it's a simple build, but they do a great job. I think the shape of the actual battery might be my only, I wouldn't call it a complaint, maybe just something to pick at. Most of the common batteries are not gonna be that height. So seven inches, most are gonna be anywhere from five and a half to six and a half inches tall. So you're gonna need a specific rack to fit these batteries. Overall though, Vatver is one of those companies that I really like. Uh, they do great with warranty issues. I've talked to other people that have had to do warranties with them. They've done a great job designing batteries over the last few years, and they've set themselves apart, really, in the industry from some of the other kind of no-name brands. So it's a solid choice for people that don't need communication, and it's right around that $900 to $1,000 mark usually. I have seen them run specials in the past, but yeah, it's somewhere around that marker. All right, guys, well, I will leave links to this battery in the description, probably an Amazon link plus the Vatver website. If you guys have bought any Vatver batteries in the past, if you've done any warranties with them, just let me know in the comments. All right, well, thanks for watching and stay tuned.